Have you been up all night? What do you do on a personal you know level on, on nights like well, this? Well, as you know, James, sort of very sad. this is this is uh, my Christmas things like this. But the thing is, is that now we've increasingly moved to these sort of almost three day extravaganzas with mm. these things. Whereas you know, once upon a time, listeners will remember, nearly all of the counts were done overnight. You kind of have to pace yourself a bit. So I actually, against all my instincts and reflexes, went to bed. Although I'm feeling quite glad of it this morning. Yes, no, fair enough. I didn't I, stay I, up for Redditch, but I, I regret it. I didn't stay up for Redditch. That could be your next <laughs> memoir, couldn't it? That could, next. That could, no, sorry, that could be your memoir. I meant your <laughs> next be book when you finish yeah, yeah, the yeah. one that you're currently working Not on. Not far from me. Go, go, yeah. I didn't stay up for Redditch no. by Lewis Goodall. Alas, should um, Give us what you think of the headlines, or, 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 or even perhaps the interesting things that aren't going to make the headlines. Well, look, I think um, we should say first of all, and it just connects to what I've just said. Because we've moved to these three-day or two to three-day local election kind of long weekends, if you like, the worst kind of long weekend for many people, um, it is true. Something that I think people have not worn in mind adequately in the last few cycles is you rush to the instant judgments on a Friday morning mm. or the early Friday afternoon. And actually, the narrative can change quite quickly. I remember the year before last, it looked like it had been a sort of terrible result for Labour, yes. pretty good for the Conservatives on the Friday morning, but when the different mayoralties started to come in and so on, you actually saw a much more varied picture. So we yes. shouldn't rush to judgment. What I, what I would say is what we shouldn't rush away from, because we're going to get, you know, 2,000 more council seats come in over the course of the next 24 to 36 hours, the mayoralties this afternoon and tomorrow, we shouldn't lose sight I would just say of Blackpool South. Blackpool South is going to be, and seats like it, far more important than anything that actually happens with, say, the big mayoralties, which will get all of because the Because that was the story of 2019. That was the story of the tw- of 2019. It was winning seats like Blackpool yeah. South, which had largely been, you know, sort of absolute marginal seats. And the point is, is what the, brought the Conservatives their big majority. But more importantly as well, I think you have to see it in the context, the piece, which is, I think we lose sight of this. We've had a lot of by-elections in the course of this parliament, partly as a result of the the recall provision that we now have. That means we have more opportunities to test the kind of political weather as the parliament has progressed. And if you just take the long view from 2021, basically the story of parliamentary politics in terms of by-elections at least, from 2021-22 onwards, is crushing defeat after defeat for the Conservatives. Initially... To the Lib Dems in the south of England, you know, you think of seats like, you know, North Shropshire and Honiton and Chesham and Amersham and so on. But pretty much from the back end of 2022 onwards yeah, to yeah. Labour, you know, you think Selby and Ainsty, Conservative to, Lib- to Labour, swing 23%, Midbeds, 20%, Tamworth, 24%, Wellingborough, 28.5%. And now Blackpool South, 26%. We've kind of got used to this. These are massive. I hadn't thought of it in conjunction in, 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 in the main, in the whole. Indeed, we've got used to this. But I mean, if you know, if you look just Blackpool South, as I say, third biggest swing to Labour in, in parliamentary history at a by-election. And the Conservatives only just defeated reform by 100 votes. So for my money, you know, you can always point to a particular by-election and say there are particular kind of exigencies and, and things about that place and whatever. But if you put them all together, what you've seen is a long trend of really profound defeat for the Conservatives. And there is no sign of that trend abating or lessening, which really, I mean, Rishi Sunak is fond of saying this is midterm problems. I mean, this is midterm if you think like the end of November is the middle of the year. It's not. This is getting towards the absolute sort of fag end, yeah. bottom of the year yeah. and uh, of the uh, parliamentary term. And if there's no sign of kind of resurrection or vivification for the Conservatives, then you've got to ask, uh, number 10, what is the plan to get themselves out of it that has been different up to now? And what would they say? I think they would try and say, they would point to the last couple of weeks and whatever you think about the particular politics of it, um, you know, they would point to Rwanda, they would point to getting on the front foot on things like benefits and so on. And again, just leave aside one's own personal views about those things. People listening might not like that. But these are things they think they can get to the front foot on politically. And they think that if they can just get through this danger period now for Rishi Sunak, which is going to be dangerous, perilous, in parliamentary terms, in terms of the leadership of his party over the next 48 hours or so, they think if they can get through it, they can point to victories, as we're expecting in the Tees Valley, imminently for Ben Houchin. Mm. I've been talking to uh, Birmingham Labour sources this morning who are very pessimistic about Labour's chances in, in the West Midlands with Andy Street, partly because of the Gaza issue yes. and the Muslim vote uh, in Birmingham in particular being suppressed for Labour. Maybe they can point to, I mean, I know there's been a lot of rather fetid speculation about Susan Hall over the past 24 hours, but if they can point to it, maybe a narrower, narrower than expected defeat in London Could for Susan win? Hall. 
I, I was speaking to a, a conservative, a London conservative sort this morning who said that they would be amazed if she right. won. I mean, I th- they, they were saying that... Just that, as, a, as a fan of mischief. Uh, well, for, uh, for, uh, for our purposes, James. I, I was going to say cynically, <laughs> for business. For business, um, <laughs> it certainly might not be the, uh, the worst outcome, but certainly in terms of... it would. Be, I mean, look, it would be an, uh, an astonishing upset. Um, if, if, and if it, it were would to dominate. happen, the only path through which it could be delivered would be if turnout in central London went off a cliff and, yes. and, and partly perhaps the suppression of a Muslim vote would, would, would yes. be there despite Sadiq Yes, you'd, if own. that's happening in Birmingham there's no reason it, it wouldn't happen in London although perhaps and, the Sadiq and high element. turnout in outer London and high turnout basically the Boris Johnson stra- strategy plus and the fact yeah. I mean you know this this, this is a con- conservative source Labour, London source say, saying this this morning they were saying which is true that Sadiq Khan you know I think most poli- impartial political analysts would reckon with has he's got his problems as a candidate for a start oh, yeah. he's running for a third term. Yeah. That's never happened and before. Ken Livingston running lost. Running on I'm not Susan Hall. Boris probably. Johnson would probably have lost if he tried it in 2016. So, yeah. you know, it is a difficult start to begin with, albeit with obviously the Labour Party nationally polling extremely well. There has been ULES. So there are people who would say that he had you know deep frailties in his incumbent. And indeed, I think if Susan Hall does lose more narrowly than expected, there will be, as this Conservative was saying to me, there will be a real inquest within the London Conservative Party, and which ultimately, to some extent, comes down to Sunak's door as the party leader, about the selection. If Paul Scully, for example, yeah. who had previously been Minister for London, widely respected MP, had run, we might be having a different conversation today, if indeed it turns out a little bit narrower than people expect. Uh, although, and I know you know this, it, it, it is a little anomalous, because Sadiq Khan is less popular than the party indeed. at the moment. And these mayoralties, in fact, almost all of these mayoralties... I suppose Boris Johnson was the apotheosis of this, mm. have been more about, often seemed to be more about candidate than party. Indeed so. And and uh, we are seeing, I mean, look, it, it, it's likely that virtually all of the incumbent mayors, we get to the end of today and tomorrow, that all of the incumbent mayors are re-elected. And that says something about, I think, the kind of nature of those political offices that, you know, you get these people, as long as they're not completely incompetent or useless, they become deeply associated with those places in the media, Voters see them fighting for their area. They become yeah. Mr. Teesside, yeah, Mr. Right, Birmingham, that's exactly Mr. Right. Manchester, it's... and whatever it is. And maybe, again, it speaks to Khan's frailties as a candidate. Maybe you could argue, if you're putting it more positively, that he was brave about ULEZ and so on, that it was a, he knew it was an unpopular policy. He stuck his colours to it and it suppressed his vote, particularly in the outer boroughs, that he would be a bit anomalous by comparison. Yeah, no, so, I mean, quite still quite a lot to watch and that result doesn't appear until tomorrow, no. so you'll be getting stuck right into it. Maybe. On Sunday, we'll have all the results, what, what the full canopy. Can, what else can we look forward to? On well, Sunday? it's all a surprise, we don't want to say, James, and that's not uh, as a means of masking the fact that it's still a, a fluid no, picture, of course. Build up a bit of tension. Build up a bit of tension. It's the ultimate don't hook and to me, James. I enjoyed your... Uh, point there about the mayors because I I, I'm, I don't know why I think it's because I grew up in Kidderminster not far from of course where you grew up so uh, but you had Richard Taylor as Mr Kidderminster we, we did that's right yes. yeah from the NHS party he was a lovely man um, but you very rarely heard Kidderminster in the news and no. uh, particularly having moved to London so what the mayor does it's almost like the political equivalent of when you hear your hometown in a news in a national news bulletin. They become the embodiment of of, of localness. They yes. become the embodiment. Or maybe your local football team in a yes. in a sort of you know bigger fixture on, on or an FA Cup run or something yeah, like that. I've exactly. never thought of it like I that. Think that's, that's a brilliant way of describing well, it. Well, James, thank you so much. That's why I love coming. You on should your have show. your own show on Sunday mornings <laughs> I called should. I don't know Friday with Lewis Goodall. <laughs> <laughs> uh, something like that. But it, yeah, so that's why it defies both party popularity so. and traditional and analysis. Also, and, if you, and if you were to put it, um, maybe if you were more cynically as well, right now, the truth as well, is that the mayoralties, particularly, particularly outside London, don't have that much power. So they have um, yeah, a yeah, lot of, they learned. have authority, mm. but they don't have much formal power. And so, you know, maybe as well as a slight element of them not, voters being aware, they're not getting the kicking when they sort of see something going, goes wrong. They're not necessarily receiving the kind of, the negative, the opprobrium that they might get if they were actually responsible for more stuff, which you could say maybe Khan, who does have more power, yeah. maybe he is, that office is a slightly more traditional kind of political office, whereas right now these other ones are a little bit more kind of banging the drum symbolism. If we were on television, I would have been stroking my chin at various points during that exchange. <laughs> such, such That's a, all I aim for. That, I, I may even have, if you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to subscribe, ring that bell. Hey, what is that? I can confirm else? he's now rubbing his what, chin. I, I, I am now rubbing my chin. Yeah. I particularly on that, that mayoral business and that's why you should tune in on Sunday morning for, the, for, for, for these sort of in, insights and uh, <laughs> someone says Simon says get a room you two <laughs>
We've got one. Here we're in. We're in a room. We're in a, a sealed room. It's exactly that. Louis Goodall, many thanks. In